You're listening to season two of By Shawnita. Holiness series novel, Weighing My Options, chapter 13. Being told by a client to check out a competitor proved to be the last straw for Tony with Tish Dolliver. Six weeks prepaid or not, she stopped the food deliveries and ended her trial with much trouble and resistance from the -the over-the-phone representative well before the six-week trial ended. Rapid Pound's shed looked to be successful for lots of people. It started on the West Coast and did have several offices in North Carolina. After being given a less harried experience than her consultation at Tish Dolliver, Tony decided to take her time committing and only signed up for a two-week supply of supplements and consultation. One thing about Rapid Pounds she liked better than Tish Dolliver from the start was the option to buy her own food. Cardboard and freezer-burned pizza taste better than some of the dishes she struggled her way through the three weeks she ate those prepackaged meals. Some of the promises and results they claimed seemed far-fetched to Tony, but she did have a large amount of weight to lose, so she prayed for the best and moved forward. On the way home from the consultation, she picked up some recommended foods from the list of things to keep in the house. Tony looked at the list of prohibited foods as if they didn't matter initially, but with client meetings, eating at restaurants proved to be more challenging than she expected. One of the clients suppressed a laugh as she pulled out the salad dressing she purchased on a whim. The one thing she had to admit to herself was that the weight seemed to be dropping off her at a rapid rate. So rapid a rate, some of her skin had begun to sag. She had bat wings before, but now, instead of thump bat wings, they looked weird. Nonetheless, she plowed ahead into week two. Her consultation went well, with the exception of the woman attempting to sell her even more supplements and products she didn't want or need. Some of the supplements she took already had her feeling weird. An appointment to meet with her doctor wasn't available until the following week. She was determined to make this diet work. So she took them without fail over the week. A a horrible headache greeted her before the alarm sounded Sunday. That kept her from volunteering at the orphanage she went to every week. Three dosages and a long nap later, she moved around only long enough to drink some water and return to bed. The appointment with her doctor couldn't come soon enough. Dr. Knoxley walked into the exam room with a smile on his face. Someone's been losing weight. I'm proud of you, Tony. Tony shielded her eyes from the light and nodded. What's wrong? I've had a migraine headache I can't get rid of since yesterday. Is that why you came in today? Dr. Knoxley sat on the stool at the foot of Tony's examination table. No, I started Rapid Pounds Shed last week and they recommended all of these supplements I never heard of and I wanted to meet with you to make sure they're okay with my medications. Truth be told, I'm not feeling so good. Tony dropped her head. Dr. Knoxley accepted the bottles from Tony. I want you to allow the nurse to do a quick finger prick to check your cholesterol. Our lab technicians are here, so you'll have the results before you leave today. Tony nodded again. What seemed like a few minutes, but was an hour later, Dr. Knoxley returned. The look on his face matched how Tony felt. You have to stop taking these supplements immediately. And this eating plan. Your cholesterol is up. I don't know if it is the foods you're eating or the supplements interfering with your prescription. So just stop both. Tony's shoulders slump. If you lost the weight fast it is probable you're going to regain it back. I have some brochures if you're ready now to take them. Dr. Knoxley wrote something on a prescription pad. Your blood pressure is elevated, which I believe is due to the stress and pain from the migraines. I have asked them to give you a list of registered dietitians near you and information on a weight loss center not far from us your insurance has an agreement with that we've worked with in the past. Dr. Knoxley stood next to Tony. I'm going to check your vitals and prescribe some pain medications until these 
supplements get out of your system to help with the headaches. Please consider the center, Tony. I've seen them help people committed to losing weight. Tony accepted the papers and nodded. Thank you, Dr. Noxley. Anger surged through her through the entire ride home. She couldn't take the pain medication until she reached home, so the pain from the headache, coupled with the defeat at the news of her inability to continue the diet, enraged Tony. Instead of celebrating her weight loss, she had to start horrible process all over again. Bright signs from the fast food restaurants on the way home beckoned to her. She stopped at three. One sold her favorite mocha caramel shake. Another sold the best french fries with cheese sprinkles ever invented. And the last made the best fried chicken on every side of the Dixie. Period. No point in being fat and miserable. If she would die early and alone and obese, she planned to do it with a smile from enjoying food on her face. She sat in front of the computer to check her email as she finished her food. A message from her old church and a chat invitation from Becca waited in her inbox. Tony clicked on the chat invitation. Hey, girly. Mm, You look like hell. Becca leaned in toward the screen. Thanks. Tony's eyes filled with tears. You were doing so well. What happened? Becca sat back up. Dr. Knucklehead told me to quit the program. The supplements interfere with my meds. I give up, Becca. And did I mention Minister Evil contacted me again? I don't know what these people or God at this point want from me, but I'm sick of this crap. Tony allowed the tears to fall. Good. Maybe if you get sick enough, you'll deal with the real issue and stop hiding behind your weight. Becca crossed her arm. Now is not a good time, Becca. Tony wiped the tears from her eyes. It hasn't been a good time since you left Atlanta. Yes, Raj betrayed you. And the pastor. Hell, maybe even the entire leadership at the church in Atlanta. But you're doing this to yourself, Tony. I knew you before you moved to North Carolina. The pictures you showed me from your childhood and college days didn't contain one image of someone who struggled with their weight. You looked better in your bathing suit than I did. This is deeper than you want to admit. Until you acknowledge it, none of this is going to matter. No diet is going to fix this. Becca tapped the screen. You know I'm right. Your goddaughter is crying. I'm sending you an email to the retreat I told you about. Take a look at it and call me tomorrow. I won't be near my computer. I love you. Tony nodded. She left the pain pills on the desk next to her computer. Exhaustion and pain lulled her into a fitful sleep. Images of Raj and her former pastor filled her dreams all night. Julie dropped the book into the return slot on her way into the library. Book for the annual library book sale filled three tables outside the main entrance to the library. Perched atop a pile of self-help books on everything from starting a business to needlework said a book about the North Shore diet. North Shore offered foods to avoid, diet tips, and a full line of foods available in grocery stores to use while on the program. Julie tasted one of the bars the week before as one of the vendors offered small pieces of the bar for free. She even enjoyed the snacks she purchased with the coupon from the taste test vendor. For 50 cents, Julie purchased the book she hoped would be the answer to her weight loss problems. For the first few days, Julie persevered through the cravings, crankiness, and hunger. By the end of the week, she decided the irritability and sugar withdrawals were worth the three pounds she lost. This diet had been featured on major television shows and followed by millions with success. It had to work. None of the other diets offered snacks as tasty as the North Shore products, so that alone made her want to give it at least another week. The taste of yogurt made her want to gag, so giving it up hadn't been a big problem. Avoiding potatoes, bread, and led her to visions and dreams of buffets filled with everything she couldn't eat. By the end of the second week, Julie snuck a few beers and some french fries into her lunch on Saturday 
in hopes it wouldn't derail her entire week. On her second week of the North Shore diet, Julie's cravings for bread, pasta, and red meat intensified. One of her previous diet books said beef worked well with her body structure. So much of the information in each of the books comes with each other out, she wondered if the constant headache stemmed from her confusion. Mitt continued to tell her to give up trying to be someone else's ideal size. Not ready to give up, Julie followed the menu provided for the first phase when she went shopping for groceries the Saturday after her payday. Instead of cheating, she purchased all of the things on the list. It only cost her $10 more than she budgeted for groceries. If the headaches, food cravings, and crankiness didn't subside soon, Julie knows she'd end up back in the library. Mitt walked through her door with one hand behind his back. His chivious look in his eye reminded her of the previous month he kept her fed and liquored up all weekend. Most of the time before she started trying to lose weight, she had to beg for Mitt to spend more than a night with her. But since she told him about the bet, he came over every weekend like clockwork. Not only did he bring food and he wanted to keep her up doing all kinds of things at night with and without clothes. Flattered Julie the first month. This weekend, it annoyed her. I'm not feeling well. Going to bed. Julie stood up and stretched. You need to eat something. You've been cranky and crazy ever since you started this craziness. No real man wants to lie up against a stick. Mitt placed the bags on the floor. Don't I make you happy, Julie? You don't get it, Mitt. I'm not dueling all of this to be happy. I need to get healthy. I keep trying to climb out of this fat pit and you keep setting me up to fall. Julie crossed her arms. Man, you need to loosen up. I just want you to be happy, Jiggly Jules. I'll go pick you up a salad, okay? Mitt placed his arms around Julie and pecked her on the forehead. I didn't know you were sick. What's wrong? I don't feel like talking about it. I'll be upstairs when you get back. Call me to come open the door. Julie sighed. Two weeks later, she dropped the North Shore Diet book into the book recycling bin in the parking lot near her favorite grocery store. No one mentioned the hunger pain, withdrawal symptoms, and misery associated with dieting. Tony and Brianna told her about their problems with their diets too. None of them suggested ending the bet, but the problems seemed insurmountable. Having never attempted to diet before, her results left Julie puzzled. She rescheduled her follow-up appointment because the doctor didn't want to see her again until she lost the initial weight. At her rate of tried and quit diets, that appointment may have to wait until next year. Sadness and disgust filled Julie. On the way out of the shopping complex, Julie picked up a few liquid bottles of comfort for the weekend. For the first time since the bet began, she hoped Mitt came over early. Then she wouldn't have to drink alone. Sprinty tasted weird. Not bad or good. Just weird. The more she sprinkled it on things, the more she wanted to throw in the towel again, but refused to quit another diet in the first week. This one she vowed to see to 15 days. With more than $1,000 down the drain in pills, fraud, and trashed groceries, this one had to work. For 10 days, Brianna sprinkled, sniffed, and chewed. Initially, the product seemed harmless, save for the weird, bitter, but not quite there taste that never left her mouth. People on the forums for the site said it enhanced the taste of their food. Brianna knew those people either ate sand or couldn't cook before trying Sprinty because as far as she was concerned, it tasted weird. She liked about Sprinty outweighed the problems her husband kept her from ignoring on day 14. For the last few nights, her gas smelt so bad he left her to sleep in the guest room. One night, she sneezed so loud, Tanya ran into the room to make sure they were okay. Since the first sneeze, her sinuses bothered her more than she ever remembered. Her 
allergies triggered in the spring. This close to fall, Brianna never dealt with sinus or allergy issues. She refused to believe a little powder made from normal food ingredients wreaked this kind of havoc on her sinuses. Day 15 started like the other days. Sprinkle, sniff, chew, and ignore the medicine-y taste Sprinty added to her favorite bagels and spread. A cramp on the side of her stomach crept under her belly to the other side. When Thomas walked into the room, he found Brianna doubled over on the floor, clutching her side. The smell of eggs, old garbage, and methane gas filled the entire kitchen. Brie, baby, is that you? Thomas waved his hand in front of his face. Brianna tried to answer but nodded instead. This has to stop, darling. I know you want to win this bet and you're determined to have this baby, but you're putting yourself through too many changes. How about I look into getting you some healthy cooking lessons and we join that gym around the corner? Thomas sat next to Brianna. I know the club is too far for you to be consistent working out. I can get you the best female trainer they have on staff. Female? Brianna croaked out. Yes. I've heard about chicks losing all the weight then running off with their hot younger trainer. Thomas helped Brianna off the floor. He sat her down at the table to eat in the kitchen area. Not happening. Brianna attempted to laugh when a pain gripped her bowels. Are you okay? Thomas reached into the refrigerator and pulled out a bottle of water. When is the last time you went to the bathroom? Thomas! Brianna closed her eyes. We're not about to have casual conversations about her bathroom habits. We're married, Brianna. I will go up in there like that pop singer did for his wife if I have to. What was it, like four days ago? Thomas gave her one of his I'm not dropping this looks. Brianna nodded. Thomas pulled a bottle of the -the over-the-counter stomach relief medicine from the cabinet next to the spices. He poured a dosage into the cup in the box. He hand, his hand hovered in the air in front of Brianna. Don't make me call your mother. Brianna crossed her arms and turned away from him. Thomas turned on the flat screen television across from them. He placed a cup near her on the counter. I've got all night. I will not be out to dinner with you somewhere and you begin to leak waste matter from every opening in your body and die. That has happened, you know. A woman died like that in front of her husband and ruined everyone in the restaurant's meal. You need to stop. Brianna rolled her eyes again. Go look it up. Thomas laughed. Okay, my cousin Carla told me about it, but it did happen. I'm not quitting this diet. It's the fourth one. It has to work. I already lost three pounds. Brianna tried to smile, but it looked more like a grimace. You could lose more than that eating salads and seeing Buffy up the street. Thomas pushed the cup of medicine toward her. He turned up the news. In other news today, Edward Sansky, principal of Little Bear Academy, has been charged with sexual molestation for alleged sexual misconduct with one of the students left in his care. It appears the child's mother and principal worked together so the child would not be left unattended while she attended night school two nights a week. For the safety of the child, the mother and child are not being identified at this time. The authorities hope by sharing the charges it will help any other possible victims find the courage to come forth. Back to you, Monica. A wave of nausea swept through Brianna as tears poured down her face. That is just a sin and a shame. Someone who's supposed to protect and help children, preying on them while their mother is trying to make their life better. God help them. Thomas shook his head. He went as ashen as his complexion allowed when he looked at Brianna's Brie, baby? Tears and snot filled Brianna's face. She opened her mouth to speak and vomited all over the floor in front of her chair. Memories and pain flooded her soul. She heard a voice and remembered snatches of a familiar place. The taste of the sprinty reminded her of a medicine she took as a child. Snatches of images from her elementary school flashed in her mind. Thomas pulled paper tiles from the dispenser on the wall like something on a bad sitcom. Brianna tried to help, but the tears refused to stop. Her breathing returned to normal once Thomas turned the television off. You looked like you saw a girl. Thomas pulled a bottle of cleaner from under the sink. He sprayed the area in front of Brianna. Did you know him? Brianna shook her head. 
must have been something because you didn't look nauseous before I turned the news on. You reacted like he did something to you. Thomas threw the rancid smelling paper towels into the garbage. He spun around. So quick, he made Brianna diddy, dizzy. Diddy? Her voice sounded scratchy. No, I've, I've never seen him before. Thomas braid more cleaner on the floor. You have to change your socks and pants. Need to get them in the washer while they can be saved. Brianna took her bottoms off. Glad you took Tanya home earlier. Shivana does not need to hear about this. And Tanya is sweet, but I don't want her seeing me with no clothes on. Thomas stepped around the, white, the wet spot in front of Brianna. Your stomach must feel better. Her hand pressed into the side where the cramps began. Brianna nodded. Good. Go clean up. I'm going to get us something to eat and throw that sprinty crap away. We'll talk more when I get back. Thomas helped Brianna out of the chair and around the cleaner on the floor. I guess. I don't know him or why he made me want to throw up. Brianna swallowed the lump the lie formed in her throat. You're a horrible liar, Brianna. It is one of my favorite things about you. Get cleaned up. I'll be back. Thomas kissed her temple. Brianna watched her husband take her soiled pants and socks to the laundry room. Sound of water followed her up the stairs into the bathroom. She used to lie very well. Oh well, she found a way to cover up the pain-driven binges or the lies she said herself. I hope you enjoyed Weighing My Options, Chapter 13, written and read by Shawnita. Please tell your friends about the podcast and join us next week for Chapter 14.